Hey guys, what's up? Lewin here at GarageBand and beyond with a tutorial on how to master your song in GarageBand 10 with a preset that I have developed and I'm going to share it with you guys today. As always, I like to encourage you guys, please hit that share or like or the subscribe buttons here on the channel. I really appreciate any of the support you guys can offer and help me grow my channel. I would love that. Thank you. So let's talk about mastering, okay? First step you're going to be doing is exporting your song out of the main project file, right? So the things that I recommend at this stage when you're exporting are a few, okay? So first one, make sure that you have no EQ or compression running in the master channel, okay? If you don't know what I'm talking about, here's my master channel. Go up to the track window pull down until you see where it says show master track and it'll show it to you in your project. So you just want to make sure no EQ, no compression there. It'll just make your life easier in the mastering process. Second thing you want to make sure is that the main output meters are going into the yellow only during the loudest parts of your song. It is never going into the red. Um, and like I said, at the loudest parts, only going into the yellow. I made a quick demo of a bad export just so you could see what I'm talking about. This is the loudest part of the song. Um, and check it out. Check out these meters. Right? They are living in the green. If I go down here to the one that I like, uh, this is one that I did like the export on, and look at the meters. Okay. Pretty self-explanatory. We're going to be doing a lot of this visually since we don't have increments of measure next to our meters in GarageBand. Um, it makes it a little bit more difficult, but using your ears and using your eyes, you can totally successfully do this. Don't worry about it, okay? So now you've exported your song out of GarageBand as a .AIF file, and you're going to re-import it or you're gonna drag it back into a brand new project file in GarageBand so that you can now use GarageBand specifically as a mastering tool, okay? So now you brought it in, you have something to look at. Now the plugins that I'm gonna say uh, that I like to use the most are these here. Um, some of them are optional, like the directional direction mixer, totally optional. Um, if you know, you're know you trying to get a big spread out of your mix, like you got a big mix and you want it to sound nice and wide, you can add this direction mixer. Uh, it's an awesome tool. Second thing is the channel EQ, typical EQ. Um, third is the compressor, and we're going to talk about if you need two compressors or not, and the multi-presser, which is right here, and at the end of the stage is the limiter. Okay, so let's get right into it. All right, let's start shutting these guys down and just start listening. So we're going to leave um, the directional mixer off for a little bit. Okay, we're going to talk mostly about the EQ and the compressors because those are the big parts of it. So let's get to the EQ and I'm just going to show you what I've done. All right, so when you're, and this is, I used this preset earlier, and uh, this is not the preset. If you were to use this final mix pop thing, you would not see this EQ curve. What I'm trying to talk about is this. Um, when you are mastering, one of the things that you're trying to combat is, you know, when people, you know, the way people EQ their music in their cars or on iTunes is typically that really annoying U curve, right? Where there's a lot of extended lows and a lot of extended highs. That is something you have to combat and you want to make sure that, you know, in your mix, there's not too much bass, not too much kick. You want to make sure everything has, you know, been balanced properly in the mix before you get to the mastering stage. If you find yourself on the EQ trying to lower the bass, it's not going to work. You're going to kill the overall tone. Go back, just turn the volume of the bass down, and then start all over again. It's not hard. Just do it. Take the time to do it. If you find yourself trying to EQ volumes of instruments, that means something's wrong in the mix, so you got to go back, okay? Um, but anyway, what I was talking about, what you're trying to combat is those um, sort of the rock EQ curve, which is that typical scoopy one. So what I like to do personally is to shave off the low end using the low cut or the high pass, rather. And uh, I typically bring it up to around 50 here. And, uh, you know, here's the low pass filter. And I have it just a little bit below 10K. Okay. So let's just look at it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn the EQ off.
okay? So yeah, you should hear what's going on with that EQ. One of the things that you don't want to do is EQ too much in the mastering stage. You can, you know, you can take out problem frequencies if you need to. Um, there's lots of different videos online about how to, you know, use the EQ. But one of the best things I can show you um, right now is I'll just grab this one right here. And this is all at zero, basically. So I'm going to drag this down. See how wide this is? If you come down here to where it says Q, actually, yeah, Q. And then you start with your, like I have a magic mouse and you can just sort of scroll up and down and you will affect the cue of that frequency range, right? So it's narrowing it down. So if you want to use this EQ more as a notch filter, you can actually do that by just, you know, doing this thing, finding the, finding the offending frequency and then notching it out. Um, but so you can do that. And that is something, you know, a lot of mastering guys do. This particular mix didn't need a lot of that. I'm lucky. It needed a little bit of a drop in the 200 area and just an overall sort of just to bring the brightness down. I thought it was a little harsh and I, I just don't like that. Um, so anyway, EQ is going to be pretty simple. I always recommend keeping it simple because the more you do here, uh, the more problematic it can be. And really the results of mastering should just be that it's louder, bigger sounding, but you're not trying to, you're not trying to EQ the whole thing. It should have been done properly, you know, in the mix stage. Okay. So that's pretty much it for EQing. Um, use your ears, use your ears, turn the thing on and off, make sure you like what you're doing. Okay. All right. Second guy in the chain here is going to be the compressor. And the specific compressor I'm going to recommend is the Platinum Analog Tape one. I use this pretty much just to shave a little tiny bit off the top, just to help some of those excessive peaks be tamed a little bit. This particular compressor can oversaturate and you can get that really like pumping sound that you don't necessarily want out of this kind of a mastering job. So what I recommend is just keeping the ratio really low and, you know, play around with this threshold. Obviously, the more you go towards zero, the less it's doing, right? Uh, the more you bring it down, I have this at negative 21, uh, it's, you know, a doing a lot more. And I'll just demo that so you can hear it. It's hard to hear. Okay, so <laughs> it's kind of a hard thing to hear. Um, but anyway, trust me, it's, it's doing just a little tiny bit and it makes more sense when you bring it in with the other compressor. Now, the next compressor in line is the multipressor. And I'm going to suggest the Fast Attack 4 band preset. Okay. This is a great one. There are lots of different presets to play around with in here. Fast Attack 4 band almost always works really nicely for me. And it's also one of the areas that I can get the biggest gain push out of this mastering process. Okay. So this is really the meat and bones of it all, right? You know, this is, uh, this is, this is the big one, the, the fast attack four band. Um, and then the last thing, which is pretty much, you know, one of the, the key elements is the limiter. What this guy is actually doing is just making sure that you're not going overboard, right? This is the one that you're going to be using your ears the most with. If this thing is uh, manipulated improperly, you will most certainly hear it. It will distort. It will just mess everything up. Um, so you just, you know, be careful with the limiter. Um, you use it minimally and just use it to shave off the excess at the top. Okay. Um, so those are the four main ones. Now I'm going to just play it as it is. Here we go. Okay. I'm going to turn it off so you can hear it again without anything. Okay, back on. I never talk about okay, so there's a pretty big difference. Now this is sort of a dancey song, so I did want it to have a little bit of that compression sound, just so it had that sort of pumping effect. Not a ton of it, no, not so much that it's like noticeable. It's not, you know, like side chain or anything like that. Um, just so it has like a pumping effect, just the most minimal one. Um, so now the direction mixer, I'm just going to turn it on just so you can hear it. Um, because this is a nice, this is a nice thing. I never talk about no. I never talk about no. 
if you don't, if you don't hear it, listen to the snare drum. That's where I think it makes the biggest difference. Uh, I'll just go back to the top. Well, yeah, let's go to a verse. <laughs> Okay, so the, the directional spreader thing, um, really great on drums, great for if you have a lot of vocals. It just sort of helps give you that big wide sound. One of the things, again, that I will recommend is using this minimally. Um, you got to use your ears because one of the issues with when you start spreading things to the side is that you lose all that information in the middle. That's why I love these headphones right here. These are the Avantone mix phones. Um, there's a switch. There's a switch right here. And when it's in the center, it's in stereo. If I flip it forward, it's in mono. And if I flip it all the way back, it emulates the mix cubes that Avantone makes. Um, these headphones are awesome for mixing, mastering. They're just super, super useful, especially if you don't have the ability to flip from stereo to mono easily. Just buy these headphones and never look back. They're just they're the best i love these things for mixing they're super comfortable blah 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 i have a review check out the review um anyway let's get back into this okay so directional mixer just use it minimally now one of the things that you, when you're doing all of these okay the compressor the multipressor and the limiter this is a balancing act of gain manipulation, okay? So you're not gonna, you don't wanna push too hard in any particular place. The only place you're gonna really push it will be on the multipressor. But in the compressor, I mean, you can see the gain is set to like 2.5 dB, which is very minimal. And in the limiter, it's even less. It's like the gain's one and the output level is one. Um, and I wanna talk about this output level specifically, because this is a tricky thing. Um, so this is what I'm talking about when I'm talking about visual visualizing the tracks, okay? Visualizing the meters and really paying attention to what's going on in the meters. Uh, I'm going to turn this on and off and watch these output meters, okay? I never wanted to feel So the tricky part of this is that when you're watching that, it's all in the red, right? And that seems like, whoa, you just said no red. This is one of those confusing things about mastering. All right, let's just um, look at this guy for a second here and um, just look at the meters on the professionally mastered song, okay? On the crowd. Right, they live in the red. I have a set of meters on my monitor station from PreSonus, which I also love. I love having a set of um, meters outside, and they are uh, incremented, so I do actually have a visu visualization. Um, but I don't actually look at the numbers too much. I'm usually just looking at the colors, uh, because when I play any song and the math and the uh, volume is turned all the way up. Uh, like on iTunes or whatever, those meters are pretty much always just living in the red. And it was like one of those things that I was like, oh, okay, this is interesting. And the more I learned about mastering, the more I learned, oh, it's okay to live in the red in the digital realm. Um, when I was an analog guy, this was something you just tried, tried to avoid. And I'm sure a lot of you guys know what I'm talking about. All right, this is going to be a, a sort of a long-winded video, and I'm sorry, you guys, stick with me. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's a lot to cover. Um, so, I don't know. There's so many different options you have out there, but this combination of five, I feel should represent pretty much, you know, if you're watching my channel, I feel like you're probably making like rock and pop country, um, simple stuff like that. If you're doing hip hop and stuff, you're definitely, you know, going to be able to use this, especially the dual compressor thing. Also something I should say about that dual compressor thing. The um, first one here, is not necessarily mandatory. If you're gonna look for two things that are optional here and you wanna reduce this down to three, turn off the directional mixer, turn off that second compressor. Go channel EQ, multipressor, and limiter. That would be the simplest way, cleanest, easiest way. Um, I like to use that other compressor because it adds tone. There is a tone to that analog tape compressor. Um, it's a, sort of like a warm, rich tone. Uh, it's it's just sort of, you know, it's an, an emulator and it's a nice thing to do to the low end of your 
uh, of your mixes. It, it adds a little bit of sound. Listen, just just listen, okay? <laughs> I never wanted to say goodnight. I never Actually, let's get rid of the EQ or the volume difference. Let's see if I can. Uh... Okay. Never wanted to feel confused. I never wanted to feel abused. I never so I hope that you have headphones to listen to or something because the, the difference is subtle, but it's definitely there. Uh, this platinum analog tape compressor is really nice for warming up your tracks if you want to warm it up in sort of like that plug-in way, you know, where you're trying to get that emulation sound. So anyway, this is one of those that I like, but it is sort of optional. This is, I just wanted to sort of beef up the, the overall, and this is what I used it for, plus shaving off a little bit of the top. So, um, gosh, you guys, this is, <laughs> I'm getting over having the flu. I'm a little, I feel a little scattered and I hope this is helping. What I want you to walk away with at the end of this video is just understanding that it's a balancing act of gain. The export of your song initially is essential that it, the song is right. You know, um, if you're EQing out, like I said, if you're trying to EQ out specific instruments, uh, don't do it, go back, mix them out, right? Mix them back as you need or in, right? You're not going to change the level of individual instruments with EQ. It's not going to happen. Something's wrong in the mix. The other thing I want you to walk away is, is that these five plugins come in everybody's GarageBand 10. I know in the last video that I made, there was like that modern setting and uh, pretty much like within, I think it was like a month later, people started going, there's no modern setting in GarageBand. And I was like, what? And so I went back and I looked and I was like, oh great, I made a video. And then they like made it totally obsolete. It was very annoying to me, but that video still has tons of good information. If you watch that one, um, you know, you should watch that one because there's lots of good information about mastering. But I wanted to give you a, a preset that I developed for you guys. And um, I hope that this helped because this has been a, a labor of love trying to develop this for you guys. And I think this should work. If you have any questions or comments, please leave it in this section below. Like I said, hit that subscribe button, the like button, the share button, any of those three or all of the three. That'd be super nice of you. And I really appreciate it. Always watch all my videos. I got like 280 something of them. I've been here for a long time doing this for a long time. I love that you guys keep watching and I... Uh, we'll keep doing it, okay? So have a great day, and I'll talk to you soon. Peace.